This is the sermon for March 21st, 2021. Divine gift, wisdom, and welcome. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. James 3, 13 through 18. Are any of you sensible or wise? The divine wisdom leads us to be friendly, gentle, sensible, kind, helpful, and genuine. When peacemakers plant seeds of peace, they will harvest justice. In Mark 9, 35 through 37, after Jesus sat down with the 12 disciples, he said, if you want the place of honor, you must become a slave and serve others. Then Jesus had a child stand near him and put his arm around the child and said, When you welcome even a child because of me, you welcome me. And when you welcome me, you welcome God. Well, last week we talked about Christ crucified, which looks like foolishness and a stumbling block to the world. Who wants to follow a gentle, compassionate teacher like Jesus when the disciples thought for sure that crucifixion would be the end? Makes no sense. Of course, we know about the mystery of resurrection and new life, but even that is hidden. Our American culture loves Christmas, but not Easter, not really. Why do you think that is? Americans love bunnies and chocolate eggs and Easter baskets at Easter time, but not really the scriptures and the stories that are told at Easter. In church, we enjoy a few of the triumphant hymns, like Up From the Grave He Arose. And I've always wondered what that hymn means for our lives. Heaven? Pie in the sky? By and by, it's not very relevant for Americans because Americans tend to be allergic to considering death at all. And even the church doesn't want to consider it. But Durand, oddly enough, has captured the heart of faith. They have a painting at the back which captures the road to Emmaus. Jesus is hidden in the road to Emmaus story. They think he's a stranger while he walks with the two disciples. And they don't know it is Christ until they go in and they're all gathered around the table and they're eating and drinking and talking. And then they see that it's Christ. And, they, and then he disappears from view. Very curious. We don't see a triumphant Christ in the scriptures. Instead, we come to see that we are the body of Christ meant to embody love for everyone, for everyone. There is no king-like, glorious, crowned, enthroned, victorious, shining Jesus. If the world had its way, Christ would be portrayed like Rambo. The winner, clearly. Instead, we have a mysterious, scarred, hidden Savior. He's glimpsed and then he disappears. Even the disciple Thomas wants to touch the wounds and scars, and Thomas seems to be looking for certainty. Certainty, which accomplishes what exactly? Christ can't be nailed down into our certainty or our desire for certainty. They tried that once. Instead, the, the American way is about success, and Jesus took the way of humility and powerlessness to the point of a suffering death. Jesus left the rest to God. That is what we know for certain. Even spirit and resurrection and rising, these are not big, flashy, obvious things. We find spirit and rising in the quiet love that we give and receive. We find spirit and rising in the warmth of human connection. 
We find rising in being forgiven or offering forgiveness to others. We find spirit and rising in living to love another day. We find spirit and rising in humility, perseverance, joy, and in laughter. We find spirit and rising in courage, and that's what I hope to talk about next Sunday. In the world's ways, we trust ourselves rather than God. On an average day, we say, no thanks God, I've got it covered. We don't trust that we really are the frail, needy humans that God has made because we are self-made people, independent and self-reliant. We live our lives like we don't really need God, except maybe when we're desperate. And then we rub the little genie bottle for our magic genie God. Please hear me in this. Crying out to God the prayer, help, is a great prayer. And it is a great place to begin or to return to at any time because it's all about grace. It's grace all the way down, like we tease. Growing up into maturity in Christ is finding our way, taking each step with Jesus and with one another. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Remember in last week's scriptures, the disciples were arguing about who would be the greatest. Today's passage uh, in Ephesians is Paul telling us that every shred of grace and wonder in us is from God so that we have no cause to boast. It's all gift. If you are not focused on winning in our culture as a good American, then you might be focused on shame. That's the opposite, the flip side of the coin. Most humans feel shame. This James scripture is for you. God's wisdom leads us to be friendly, gentle, sensible, kind, helpful, and genuine. When peacemakers plant seeds of peace, they will harvest justice. God takes your hand in this passage and lifts you up with these gifts. Tom Weston said about shame, I love this, the five rules of being an American grown-up. One, you must not have anything wrong with you or different about you. Two, if you do have something wrong or different about you, you need to correct it ASAP, as soon as possible. Three, if you really try, but you just can't fix it or change it, then pretend that you have. Pretend you're just fine in every way. Four, if you can't even fake being fine in every way, though, please don't show up, as it's very painful for the rest of us. And five, but if you are going to insist on the right to show up, you should at least have the decency to be ashamed. I love those rules, right? Those are the rules that were taught in school by parents, by teachers, and by our culture. How about as Christian communities, we decide to break these rules and show up in community? Sadly, healing from shame following the James passage only seems to happen one day at a time. It doesn't happen like a glorious victory. Hmm. That critical shame voice is continually trying to keep us small and afraid. You can thank that shame voice for having kept you alive this far and then gently suggest to that voice that it won't be needed for this life anymore. After all, we have Christ and we have these gentle gifts mentioned in James. And we have community. You can give that critical voice a name, invite it to go elsewhere for a different job, and then we can move into renewed curiosity about the world, renewed curiosity about nature, 
We can be on the couch with a good book, on the phone with a friend. We can tend to ourselves with responses that might actually comfort, like a movie that makes us laugh, talking with a friend, a good cry, or a lovely cup of tea, or today's scriptures, or rising in the spirit, uh, resurrection and new life. Jesus said, when you welcome even a child because of me, you welcome me. And when you welcome me, you welcome God. Friendship with God sounds good to me. Amen.